Hey guys, Alex here from Homeschool of Bel Air. So I wanted to give you guys a little update as to how I rearranged Evelyn's preschool area. Stay tuned. All right guys, um, one of my last videos, I had rearranged my homeschool room. And one of the things that I was noticing was that Evelyn's preschool area was just not functional. The little desk that I had put up here was actually really low that it was actually starting to hurt my back. Um, and it just wasn't happening. Um, not only that, because it is more of a painting type craft table, she tends to make a huge mess because she knows she can paint on it. So it was a constant battle with her just in the last couple of days trying to maintain that little table clean. Um, as you can see, we haven't started school yet, but I wanted to show you guys a little bit of how I set up her preschool area and how it's a little bit more inviting for her. She's actually, I can't actually get her out of this little corner now. Um, so let me give you guys a little more in depth into what I did to her little preschool area. One of the first things I wanted to show you guys is the little yellow calax, um, calax or calic. I forgot what this unit is called. But um, the calyx, I think it's called. I'll put it in the description box. But what I did was, before I had a few of my bins. Um, and in these bins, I had a lot of things that I kind of didn't want her messing with. It's things that I, I like to use to set out activities for them. But it's a lot of little magnets, a lot of little um, pieces. And I was noticing that because they were on this side, she was getting into the bins quite a bit. So I decided to... And I'll show you guys real quick. In the area where I had all my books, I went ahead and took all my books out and went ahead and brought those bins here. Now, inside these bins, I have just a ton of um, like lacing cards, which is fine if she gets into them, but I'd rather it be something that I set out for her. Just because if I let her have this, she'll just make a big mess with it. Um, and also some of them have wooden pieces or just a bunch of tiny little pieces that just kind of get everywhere. So like I said, this is something, um, like even my light bright, I'm always constantly finding the little pieces everywhere. So like I said, these are just things that i rather be stuff that I set out for them. Um, wooden blocks, phonic blocks, puzzle pieces, uh, magnet letters, things like that. Um, so this one's just filled with magnet letters. Um, and then the last one is my math manip manipulative one. So like I said, I wanted to get this out of her little preschool area because like I said, she was digging in quite a bit and pulling just everything out. So now I ended up moving all my books. I went ahead and made room. I moved all my curriculum books and just kind of squeezed everything in. And I went ahead and opened up these last two shelves which I was able to actually fit all the books that we own pretty much in these last two shelves. So that worked out perfectly. So what I did with the back side of the Kallax shelf is because it is pretty wide. The little cubbies are 13 by 13, so they're pretty wide. Her preschool curriculum, because I have it set out um, letter by letter or week by week, I ended up setting it here. So it fits perfectly. It sticks out a little bit, but it's fine. And then a few of the books that I kind of don't want her messing with too much, um, they're a little pricier, so it's not something, and she tends to chew on these cardboard books. So I, I put them on my side. So anyways, on her side, I went ahead and put her little VTech, um, Phonics Apple. Down there are a few of the little puzzle pieces and bigger, chunkier, um, beads. The little alpha letter bean bags that I made her are there in the bucket. This actually is empty. Um, and if anybody knows, please add it in the description box. I purchased this at Goodwill a few weeks back. And I have no idea what it's used for. And it's four different bins. And they do have almost like a netting. Um, I don't know what this is called in the bottom parts. Um, the only one that doesn't is the green one. So please, if anybody knows what they're for, please let me know. Um, I was just going to use them to set activities out for Evelyn. If it, I was missing or running out of space, I can obviously set up an activity pretty much in each one of them. Uh, and if it's perfectly in here or even puzzles or whatever. So I was just going to use them in storage. They're just empty now. Um, so on this one, I put her little color fish, color sorting fish and our lights in action um, gears. 
And then down here, the little, uh, and I forgot, somebody told me what these were, these were called. For some reason, I just can't remember. These little blocks, and then our little um, weight thing, scale. And then a few other puzzles and games and other things on this side. So it just seems to fit perfectly. I do sometimes when I set out work for my preschoolers, I do like to use the top of this. So like for instance, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into what I decided to do differently. So I cleared off this wall. I went ahead and printed out a pretty simple but colorful alphabet for her. Um, and I just hung up string and I just close pinned it to the string. I decided to move my whiteboard to this wall because we are gonna be doing a letter of the week curriculum and with every letter, I'm gonna have her do one craft with the letter. And I want to be able to add more string to this wall and add pretty much A through Z with her crafts on this wall. So I wanted to leave this wall open. Um, so what I did was, like I said, I brought up the white table back up. She's using the red rolling table. And I like it because obviously you can actually move the chair up or down. And because she the table is kind of high and she is very petite, um, I could actually move it up high enough so she fits perfectly so what I did with her little tray area and like I said we haven't started school but I wanted to give you guys a little glimpse as to as to what it might look like once I do set it up for her to start school so one of the first things that I did and I'll show you guys when my son was using this tray work I wasn't really even utilizing these drawer bins here I just used them for extra storage for play-doh um, and other things but now that I have the bigger space up here in the loft room I was able to switch things around um we were before in my school room I, ha I was using one of our spare rooms as my classroom and it's a little bit of a smaller bedroom and um I wasn't able to fit too much stuff so like I said I was using these bins just as extra storage um but now I could actually use them for other things so I decided to label them for Evelyn so this red bin here it's coloring and activity books. So this is pretty much coloring books, some of these little wipe clean um, activity books, her JDA toddler learning folders in here, and a few of just uh, these little paint with water books, her little magna writing board, um, let me see what else, her little chalkboard, all that kind of stuff is in here. Now, I, at first I had set her up with a little caddy with her crayons and markers and stampers and all that stuff, but I was noticing that because it was on her desk, she was just using everything. She was opening up the markers, leaving them open, they would dry up. So what I'm doing now, and it's a little bit more functional, um, is I set up the bottom two bins with her little, um, her little supplies. So the bottom one, has her glue, crayons, pencils, markers, and her color pencils and her scissors. And I'll show you what I'm doing because her scissors aren't in here and her glue stick isn't in here, but I'll show you guys what I'm doing. And it's easier for me to set up her trays having this stuff here. So all her little crayons are pretty much, um, her little triangle Melissa and Doug crayons are here. Her regular chubby crayons or Crayola chubby crayons are here. These are some double-sided crayons that I got for her at the Dollar Tree. She absolutely loves these. And they're just, um, they have one color on one side and another color on the other side. Um, so those are in here. Then her Crayola dry erase markers are there with the little eraser. The Ikea stampers I stuck in here. Her Ikea color pencils are in here. And then this little tray here has... Um, her dry erase crayons with the dry erase uh, little eraser napkin that it comes with. They come with, I mean, her dry erase marker and two of her little chubby pencils. So that's what's in the bottom one. Next bin up has all her little Play-Doh, a few little stampers, um, and her daubers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, my dad was so down that it is. That's right. Okay. So, like I said, this this drawer has her bingo daubers, her little Play-Doh, a few and little random stampers from Oriental Trading Company. 
So this is what's inside of this bin. So in this third bin is a phonics workbook. Completely free, online, my, um, easy peasy, learn to read curriculum. And I decided to go ahead and print out the little workbook for Evelyn. Um, it was something that I had started to, I had done last summer with Adrian before we started preschool. We kind of did almost like a crash course on the alphabet and I had used it with him and I really did like it. I'm gonna introduce it. I'm gonna introduce it and just see where it goes. So what I did, and I'll show you guys real quick, is I just made this little cover. I found this really sweet little picture of three little girls uh, reading a book. So I made her the little cover and it just says my easy peasy alphabet workbook, preschool, um, and then her name. And this is a little tracking sheet. I just stuck it in the front and I have one of my own. And then all the, the getting ready, so it's the getting ready one girls printable workbook. So I went ahead and printed up a whole little workbook for her. Um, I also like the fact that um, Easy Peasy has a, almost like a day by day breakdown as to what to introduce, what to do. And along with the Just Reading Mama learning the alphabet curriculum, this is just gonna some, be something that I just incorporate. These lessons are actually pretty short and they don't introduce the easy peasy uh, learn to read book until lesson 172. So I'm pretty confident that Evelyn's just gonna enjoy doing the little activities and um, yeah, so anyways, I just thought it was super cute. So I went ahead and printed that out for her. So it's definitely gonna be something that I'm gonna be introducing to her after all. Um, so on this green top bin, I went ahead and added her morning work binder and writing. Now writing isn't real. I mean, I just stuck in this little blue or purple writing book in here. It's not going to be something that she works completely out of. If for instance, we're working on letter A, I'm just going to pull out letter page A, the page with the letter A and set it on her desk, kind of how I did today. Um, and then obviously work from her little uh, morning binder. So that's what I have in that top drawer. So now the work trays. And this isn't exactly how I'm gonna be setting it up, but it's just to give you guys a little idea as to how most likely it's gonna look. And sorry, Evelyn's right here next to me um, playing with her, her little leapfrog alphabet bus. Okay, so one of the first things that I usually do, obviously after morning binder, I go ahead and set out the traceable, traceable letter. Um, and usually I, I'll have her just trace it and I, set everything out for her so that she doesn't go digging for the supplies. I set everything out that she's gonna need for whatever acti activity. So for instance, sorry for the glare. So she has her little traceable letter A picture. I put her little um, Crayola dry erase crayon and a little eraser. So I set out the blue crayon and obviously she would just have to obviously trace her letter A and decorate this page however she wants. And then she has her little eraser if she wants to go ahead and erase it and try again. So that's how I set up that first little activity. Um, I do use a little flashcards for the letter for the represent representation of the letter. I also just purchased her the, build, um, the letter builders from Learning Resources, those should be coming in this Friday. I got her the magnetic ones, um, as opposed to the just hard plastic ones, and I'll try to show you guys those once they do come in the mail. So one of the first things that I did was, and these are supposed to be lacing cards, but I was just gonna have her hook some of these little linking um, shape things onto the little holes that I punched. I just didn't wanna laminate these cards because I did print them out for every single letter. So instead of having her lace them, she doesn't enjoy lacing as much as just linking things. So what this activity would be is find all the circles and link the circles on the letter. So then she would obviously, so this would be incorporate the shape and obviously the letter. So she would just go in her little bowl here and find all the little circles and just link them together onto her letter A. Um, so the next tray, and usually the way that I would do it with Adrian was we would just go down down start here or whatever I would set out on the desk would be first and then we would just go down the line and then work from there and then there and then pretty much be done there um, so the next tray here would be a little puzzle activity 
and I didn't, I'm just showing you guys different ways that you guys can set up the little puzzle pieces and these are just a printed on cardstock so what I did was I just used a double-sided tape and it's something that she could either um, it can be just a little bit chunkier for her with the actually um, putting the Legos together so it makes it a little funner sometimes for little hands to do it that way so I went ahead and set a few of them up like that and then obviously I did set up a few just regular that she can maybe just set out and try to figure out uh, what pieces go with what pieces so either way kids tend to like puzzles and putting things together so either way is just as fun I might actually just leave it like this and have her do a little bit of both um, we'll see once we start then the next activity would be more of a big a little a sorting um, and this activity has the little A's and the big A's and then I just added a little bowl with the magnetic letters and uh, in the lowercase and in the uppercase so all she would really have to do is match up the big uh, the uppercase match up the lowercase and just kind of do it that way um, and this one here even on Friday if it's something that she wants to go ahead and color she can go ahead and just color that sheet if she wants um, so that's that activity the next activity would be her daubing activity now this is why i like to have her supplies there because once i set up her trays i'm not running around the whole school room looking for stuff all the stuff that i need is here so i just know to set it in her little tray so here she has her little um, letter a daubing page and then i just added her little blue dauber so it's all ready to go for her and eventually it would be something that she can just pick up the tray, set it on her desk. When she's done, she knows to put it back and grab the next one. So the next one would be this yellow bin here. Um, and this would be her JDA um, Alphabet Interactive Notebook. And like I said, if this wasn't set up, all I would really have to do is pretty much on the day that I would set it up, I would pretty much just set her page on top of her interactive notebook, set out an additional little bin, and then just grab the things that I know she's gonna need. So her scissors, her glue stick, and obviously her little crayons. Um, and then I would just go ahead and set it in here for her. This is why I decided to set up her little um, supplies here, just to make it easier on me. And she knows not to come in here. I already told her not to come in here and grab these things. Um, she knows that mommy's going to be setting them out for her, um, depending on what she needs for whatever activity. So like I said, that would be her next little activity. And then the bottom one, this yellow bin usually is always set up as some kind of hands-on, more of a sensory type bin. So for this, I decided to make it a blue bin. So she would just have to find, and pretty much everything in here is blue. Um, I figure I would just make it a little harder throughout the whole month. Um, since we're going to be focusing on the color blue for the whole entire month, but I can change it up. I can do different things in here. I can maybe do, you know, some lacing, um, these beads here, you would have to lace them. So I can maybe just do that one day. Um, so with this activity, she would just have to come in here and pull out all the blue stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, she loves digging in this grass stuff. So anything like that is we think it might not be fun for them but it really is um so that would be the last little bin and then we come into more of the math tray so usually i like to set up the math here because sometimes i'll add numbers here or whatever else i might need um so for this activity i decided to go ahead and put it on a cookie sheet and then you have your little number cards so it would just be pull out a card and then find the number inside the apple and then set your little magnet on it um, and then just go through the numbers um, until obviously you fill up your whole little apple. So that would be the little activity for math. And then we would go into our color activity. And color activity most of the time is just gonna be a coloring page. Um, so for instance, or a painting page, we have her blue coloring page and then on her little dish, I decided to set out different blues um i did a light blue color pencil a dark blue color pencil a dark blue um crayon and then this is a really dark blue crayon and then just a regular blue crayon 
So like that, she can really color her page with all the different shades of the same color and just see the difference in how all the blues look, but they're still all blue. Um, so that's just gonna be a fun little coloring activity for her. And that would pretty much be the end of her day along with doing her lesson from her little easy peasy workbook. But that was, that's pretty much what a day for Evelyn would look like. Super simple. Um, most likely if we do a craft for the letter, it'll, it'll either be, it'll either be on that Tuesday or that Friday. And it would be something um, like a handprint alligator or a little handprint apple or just a cut out of an apple, whatever it might be. But I would go ahead and add a string here and go ahead and place it there. And we would just, like I said, go from A all the way to Z with her little crafts for the school year. Um, and I think it's going to be a nice little setup. And I'm already enjoying it. Even though we haven't started school, I'm already enjoying this setup so much better. I feel like it completely opened up my little school room. Um, it makes it look just a little neater, I think, having um, especially those cubbies inside um, or these cubbies there instead of just books showing. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you guys have any questions about anything and uh, feel free to subscribe and like this video and thanks so much. See you next time.